Hello everyone. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the various defect in bricks and the reason for these defect. So the first defect in brick is because of the overburning of bricks. So this is, as the name suggests, this defect occurs because of the overburning of bricks. The bricks are overburned and the chemical constituents of the bricks get more converted into a soft molten mass and because of which the brick starts to lose its shape right and uh, the bricks that are overburned as can be seen in the picture here are of no use right they cannot be used for any uh, good construction works then we have underburned brick and uh, just like in overburned brick when the bricks were overburned in underburned brick what we have is the bricks are underburned right that is uh, during the burning process they do not complete it's their vertification process right we have already discussed about the vertification so you can refer to that lecture for the that what is the vertification of brick right so when bricks are underburned they are uh, they do not achieve their strength and hence cannot be used for the desired construction work right and uh, we have seen that uh, this overburning of brick and the underburning of bricks uh, occurs mainly in the burning in clamp right we have discussed the various structures that are used for the burning of brick right and in that we discussed about the burning in clamp and there we had seen that uh, the bricks the clay bricks that were kept near to the uh, fire source and the bricks that were kept away from the way to uh, distance from the fire sources right so in those cases the overburned brick and the underburned brick were obtained right we have discussed about that in the structures that are used for the burning of brick again you can refer uh, those lecture for the uh, for uh, in detail understanding after this we have bloating and the bloating is the defect that is observed as spongy swollen mass right we have a spongy swollen mass that is visible from the from the at the surface of the brick and this is basically because of the presence of excess carbonaceous matters and the sulfur in the natural clay that is used for the preparation of brick right so this is called as bloating then we have black core and again your clay that is used for the construction or preparation of the brick that clay has a substantial amount of bituminous matter or the carbon right and when this clay, clay is uh, gone through the process of burning the black coat expels out of the brick right and this uh, black coat is more or less visible when the bituminous material or the carbon based material do not go complete oxidation right and because of which this type of defect is visible then we have chuff and chuff are the deformation of the shape of the brick caused by the rainwater falling on hot brick right so basically what happens is that uh, you the bricks undergo the burning process and after that as soon as the bricks are taken out of the lot uh, the rainwater falls over these just burned bricks right and because of which what happens is that the edges or the surface wherever the rainwater falls or the cold water falls get damaged right so this deformation is called as chuff and then we have spot so again in the natural clay if we have a presence of iron sulfide right the natural clay that is used for the construction of brick that has high amount of iron sulfide so in that case also uh, uh, the dark dark spots are visible on the brick surface right so this type of defect is called as spots right so these spots are caused because of the presence of high amount of iron sulfide in the natural clay that is used for the construction of brick conventionally no major damage happens because of the these black spots but if the bricks are to be used for the decoration purposes are to be used for the aesthetic purposes then in such case these are not 
allowed right because having these amount of so much amount of spots on the bricks that are to be used for the decorative purposes will not serve its purpose it will not be it cannot be used for the decorative purposes right the next effect is blister and lamination so your blister and lamination are more or less caused because of the entrapped air right so during the molding of clay for the bricks what happens is that air is entrapped in between the voids right so air is entrapped in between the clay particles now uh, when the brick is made and that brick is used for the lining of sewer pipes then what happens is that uh, the sewer waste contains lot of chemicals right and what happens is that that chemical have a adverse impact on the bricks and because of which the bricks are broken into small fragments right so when these bricks are broken into small fragments this is called as blister right uh, so bricks are the surface of the brick is uh, broken into small fragments this is called as blister and this generally occurs on the surface of sewer pipes due to the air imprisoned during their molding of the bricks then we have lamination and again lamination uh, is caused by the entrapped air in the voids of clay now what happens is that uh, uh, concentration of large amount of entrapped air in on the surface of the brick so brick is already weak from those part right and upon the slight impact or slight damage on that part leads to a chip, a chip out of that surface right that uh, part gets chip out from the face of the brick so this type of failure is called as lamination right your lamination is caused by entrapped air in the voids of clay and uh, because of the entrapped air a thin lamination is formed that is uh, that lamination separates the that part of the brick from the rest of the surface of the brick so that is why the bonding is somewhat loose and uh, upon the action of small load this surface breaks down then the next kind of defect is checks and crack so your check defect happens because of the presence of excess amount of lumps of lime and or presence of excess amount of water right so when you have excess amount of lime and excess quantity of water that is mixed during the preparation of material or the clay for the molding of the brick so if that is the scenario then what happens is that uh, this lime reacts with the quantity of excess quantity of water and uh, due to which expansions happens and which results in the disintegration of bricks while your cracks happens because of the excess quantity of water that is present in the clay now because of the uh, excess quantity of water in the clay that is from which the mold is prepared and then this mold is went for the burning process now when heat is provided to the clay mold then abrupt loss of moisture happens because of which shrinkage effect happens right and because of abrupt loss of moisture uh, the shrinkage happens and the cracks are generated throughout the surface of the brick and because of which the bricks become weak and premature failure of the brick happens okay so it should be noted that your check defect is caused because of the presence of excess amount of lump of lime and or excess amount of water and because of the uh, quantity excess quantity they react with each other and the expansion happens in crack excess quantity of water is there and when they are brought to the burning stage the loss of moisture takes place at a very short duration of time because of which shrinkage effect happens cracks are developed on the surface and failure happens the next defect is efflorescence and uh, this defect is caused because of the alkalis present in the bricks so so what happens is that because of the uh, presence of alkalis in the clay from which the mold of the brick is prepared so these alkalis when comes in contact with the moisture right they absorb the water and the alkalis get crystallized right and upon drying they results into formation of white powder or patches on the surface of brick right and we previous lecture discussed about the test that is done to check the efflorescence on the brick and the damage or the severity of the efflorescence on the brick so we have discussed about the test you can refer to the testing of brick for, to understand the testing procedure and the permissible observation value from which we can see the severity of efflorescence on the brick
right? The, your efflorescence can be minimized by selecting the proper clay, mate, uh, clay material and preventing the excess quantity of moisture to come in contact with the masonry work. Okay, so these are few of the defect that are there in the bricks and should be properly uh, taken care of so that the uh, these do not occur during the uh, during the any stage of preparation of the brick or during the laying of the brick because they eventually uh, compromise the overall strength and durability properties of the brick and make the brick unsuitable for the intended use okay so this was all about the uh, defects in the brick uh, if you think the lecture was useful and up to your expectations make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel for more lecture like these and press the bell icon for regular notification thank you